Santa Monica Studios have just released a brand new God of War Ragnarok trailer as well as announce a lot of brand new information. So I'm going to break down everything we know so far about it in a top 10 format for you. So hopefully after this video, you'll know exactly what's going on with this game and what to expect. But first of all, when is the game coming out? Well, we now have the Ironclad official release date of November the 9th, thanks to the recent announcement from Sony and Santa Monica Studios, and it will be releasing on the PS4 and PS5 consoles. And if you do manage to get hold of a PS5 in the future, as I can appreciate that it's still like trying to get hold of gold dust at the moment sony will offer you a game upgrade at a ten dollar cost if you do want your ragnarok ps4 version transitioned into the ps5 one now they haven't specified what major benefits you'll receive graphically on the next gen console upgrade but i do imagine that they will be quite substantial now playstation aside if you're wondering will ragnarok be available on the pc well it won't be on launch but sony have recently acquired the pc game porting specialist company nixis software and have stated publicly that they intend for half of their PlayStation gaming catalog to be on the PC by the end of 2025. Now for context, it did take three years for Sony to port over the 2018 God of War game from PlayStation to PC, but with their recent porting acquisition, I imagine that Ragnarok's going to be sped up somewhat because it's going to sell like absolute hotcakes and it's going to be a crazy quarter for Sony financially. You'll also be able to pre-order this game from July 15th and depending upon when you watch this video, that may mean you can do so right now. But let's first go over what's included in each game edition so you know what benefits you can pick up if you're quite keen to drop a little bit more cash on this game. So let's first look at the launch edition which is the first pre-order level so to speak where you'll be picking up Kratos's Risen Snow Armor set as well as Atreus's Snow Tunic and winter is definitely coming there is no doubt about it and by the way the prices haven't yet been published at the time of recording this video so until July 15th comes around or perhaps it already has depending upon again when you are watching this video you'll be able to check the retail prices on the ps5 website secondly we've got the digital deluxe edition which comes with the darkdale armor set as well as the darkdale weapon skin for the blades of chaos and the leviathan axe you'll also get the official soundtrack with this edition a digital mini art book and an avatar set and theme for your PlayStation when you do log in to play. Now this is when it gets juicy though because the collector's edition includes everything in the deluxe but also a steelbook display case which doesn't include a disc by the way which is a little bit rogue in my opinion but you do pick up two Vanir wooden carvings, a dwarven dice set and a big boy 16 inch Mjolnir replica which is Thor's signature weapon housed in the knowledge keepers box which I think looks absolutely fantastic and finally we have the Jotnar edition which includes everything in the previous two editions as well as a seven inch record of the soundtrack three pins a falcon bear and wolf representing fey kratos and atreus we also pick up the legendary drapnir ring very famous in norse mythology as well as brock's dice set and a awesome looking Yggdrasil cloth map on top of your Mjolnir hammer. Now I think the team have done a really great job here, it just looks quality, but I imagine that the Jotnar set will require a substantial bank loan or a remortgaging of your house to actually get your hands on this, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Now even though those additions do look great, what's actually going on with the story in this sequel as it's been four years since we last saw the dynamic duo in action? Well let me sling in a very swift spoiler alert here just in case you haven't played the first game, but the official line from Sony is God of War Ragnarok takes place a few years after its prequel as the freezing winds of Fimble Winter have come to Midgard and the Nine Realms. Now Fimble Winter is a great winter storm which precedes the end of the world by the way, and after three winters are complete, numerous wars follow it which then brings forth Ragnarok, otherwise known as the Norse end of the world. This is all started because Kratos and Atreus inadvertently triggered the beginning of Ragnarok earlier than prophesied by killing Baldir, who was Freya and Odin's son, and who was previously thought to be immortal until Kratos came along and Atreus with some sneaky mistletoe. Now, as you'd expect, though, a lot of Norse gods aren't too chuffed about this, so Kratos and Atreus will be taking on the remaining gods in the Norse pantheon while trying to stop Ragnarok and learn more about themselves and their father-son relationship. Speaking of which, Sony went on to say that there will be huge amounts of story development in this sequel as Atreus is desperately curious and wants to understand who he is and who he could be. We of course learned in the 2018 game that Atreus is half giant and was given the Jotna Norse name Loki by his now deceased frost giantess mother 
Fey. This will also be the last Norse God of War game installment, so it won't be a trilogy with the director Eric Williams saying that we want to give fans a lot of answers, but we also want to pose a lot of new questions at the end of the game. So what I would say is expect some finality here, but also expect to see some opportunity for new beginnings within the wider God of War series. So with that all in mind, who are going to be the big players in this sequel in terms of protagonists? Well, at the core of the story, Kratos and Atreus will be working with Tyr, who is the Norse God of War. War and who sought peace with the giants and tried to keep them safe against Odin who sent Thor to wipe them all out. Tyr was loved by all of the people of all of the realms because he brought forth diplomacy and good relationships with each race. Of course, Odin went on to imprison him as he believed he was a threat to his power, which is where we see Kratos and Atreus in the trailer finding him and presumably releasing him from his chains. Now, another key character appearing in this sequel is Angrabotha, who in Norse mythology is Loki's wife and the mother of their three children, that being Fenrir, Jormungandr, and Hel. Now, in the God of War series, she is one of the last remaining giants from Jotunheim, so expect a big storyline development here when it comes to Atreus and Angrabotha in particular. Additionally, Sony have officially confirmed that the Valkyries will be playing a more prominent role in this game because they weren't really part of the main story in the prequel but they were very much instrumental in the experience because they were challenging boss fights to say it politely. That said we've got two new Valkyries in Ragnarok here. The first is Horist, the goddess of the past who was responsible for bringing Odin his personal horn and Gnar who runs all of the errands for the Norse pantheon of gods. One more honourable mention here because Mimir will be returning in this game which is great news and I do hope he'll have more stories to tell us whilst we're traversing the nine realms so big fingers crossed for me on that front now game director eric williams said that kratos and atreus haven't been hanging out in the last few years doing nothing they've been putting in hard work and that's for good reason because there's some very challenging enemies that we're going to be up against in this new game on a recent playstation blog post sony revealed that officially one of the main antagonists of this game will be freya once a friend of kratos but as we've discussed after her son Baldir was killed by his hand she is seeking vengeance sony went on to say further that we want to remind players that freya isn't just a a terrifying powerful user of Vanir magic. She's also a formidable warrior and will turn every weapon at her disposal towards her son's killer, that being Kratos. Interestingly, Odin did place a curse on her to prevent her from harming others, but as we can see from the trailer here, this seems now to have been removed by Odin, so there's lots in play here and lots to think about. But in that same blog post, Thor was confirmed as the second main antagonist, which you'd kind of expect because Kratos has killed both of his sons, Magni and Modi, as well as his half brother Baldir. Now in God of War he's the chief enforcer of Asgard and one of the most dangerous beings in existence and also seeking vengeance on Kratos so I'm looking forward to several big boss battles here. Furthermore it's officially been confirmed as well that we'll be coming across the Allfather himself that being Odin but it's not specified in what capacity as of yet. We do see his ravens Hugin and Munin in the trailer who are his eyes throughout all of the Nine Realms to keep him informed so I'm sure he'll pick his moment when he sees fit to a approaches and you may have also noticed a great wolf in the recent trailer who is presumably Fenrir, Loki and Angrabotha's child with the game previously hinting to time travel to explain that kind of conundrum there. But here's one final enemy that I think that you will find interesting and those are the Ein Hajar warriors who were people that had died fighting bravely in battle and were subsequently brought to Valhalla by the Valkyries where they currently feast and prepare for Ragnarok alongside Odin so lots to keep us busy there and if you have found this video informative so far please do leave a very swift like down below it really does help me out so thank you very much but speaking of keeping busy in the game, we're going to be just that in this sequel because we'll be able to visit all nine Norse realms, whereas in the 2018 game, we only visited six, the outstanding being Vanaheim, Svartalfheim and Asgard, which we'll now be able to have access to. Sony have said that exploring the realms will take you everywhere from Verdant to otherworldly jungles to more intricate subterranean mining networks, and the locations that you visit will be diverse, beautiful and more mysterious compared to any other God of War game. And we can certainly see that from the scenery showcase that they've presented to us so far but instead of just exploring on foot we do have a new traversal system here with two wolves called Specky and Svana who will be pulling our sled in snowy realms with game director Eric saying that even though we're in Fimble Winter at the moment and at the epicenter of that being Midgard don't expect every realm to be blanketed in snow and ice just yet which is good news from an exploration standpoint in my opinion you don't want to just see ice across every single realm and we don't have any further visuals on map size at 
present. But if we're able to visit an additional three realms this time round, I think it's safe to say that it's likely going to be a bigger game than the prequel. Now let's talk about some weapon changes here and let's first look at the Blades of Chaos, which famously made their comeback halfway through the 2018 game, but were very much a secondary option. They'll be returning here of course, but if we just pause this video and zoom in on them here, you may notice that they're a little bit rustic and Kratos has certainly not kept them in good nick as we Brits say and I think this suggests that we'll need to level them up in some sort of capacity here bringing them back to their full potential. As for shields game director Eric Williams went on to say again that the game will have different shields which have different defensive options and abilities where we really want to open up the choice for you as a player to build your own Kratos in terms of how you want your loadout and equipment to work. We can see this demonstrated throughout the footage released so far in the form of a rectangular shaped shield as well as a more oval shape in another shot just here which I imagine complements a certain type of gameplay that you yourself will prefer. Now as for Atreus his very famous Talon bow returns here and I want to bring your attention to this very quick clip which captures Atreus in the background utilizing his bow as a melee weapon whilst it glows red hot so perhaps some variation of Spartan Rage flowing through into the weapon here and that's just speculation from me but I just can't wait to see more. So we've got some new weapon changes inbound, but how does that impact combat and new abilities? Well, Sony have said that they've taken lots of learning from the prequel and want the combat to feel fresh yet familiar. And one of their main goals has been to, again, allow us to choose how we want to approach different combat situations, whether that be from hard hitting combos, mastery of the elements or clever defensive tactics. Now, that's not to say that hack and slash mechanics are completely reduced here, but rather there's other combat options on the table, which is a great addition in my opinion, especially with the Blades of Chaos in particular, as the team have implemented new mechanics which may look familiar, and I'm not sure if you can say new, but we will be able to use the blades to pull ourselves towards an enemy, ram into them, and then slam them into the ground just like God of War 3, as well as utilising the blades as an environmental traversal tool by grappling onto ledges or platforms and pulling ourselves up to that desired position, again, just like previous God of War instalments. Eric, the game director, then went on to say that this new traversal system is baked into combat encounters which means that they will be more vertical encouraging us as players to make full use of the space around us to defeat our foes which again sounds great and I'm all for it and I can't wait to get stuck in. Now what else I'm also for is the uninterrupted camera shot which the 2018 version of the game utilised throughout the whole playthrough which means no jump cuts or quick camera snaps during cinematic or storyline scenes and this very taxing game development process has been included here in the new Ragnarok game which is great news in my opinion and I'm also personally a very big fan of the music composition in the God of War games and if you are as well well then you'll be pleased to know that the composer Bear McCreary has created a significant new character theme for this next game installment as well as going on to compose a full new soundtrack so really looking forward to that as well and sony have officially stated that comparatively to the prequel ragnarok has been upgraded to include 60 more accessibility options at launch which include improved subtitles text readability high contrast color modes and navigation assistance just in case you need it so more ticks across the board here i would say now as for future dlc or post-launch content there are no official statements regarding that as of yet However, if we do look back on the previous game, we did pick up a substantial amount of updates that did add additional content to the game, including new armor sets, weapons, game rebalances, and the option to roll into a new game plus mode whilst keeping your gear and skills all in check. Now, it didn't have any paid expansions, and they've already said that this will be the last Norse installment, so I'm not sure if I can see one happening on the next-gen console. I'd love to be wrong there, but I'd expect a similar post-launch plan to that of the prequel. Now, Sony have said that we're going to be picking up some new information information about the game before it launches in November so if you do want to stay up to date on God of War Ragnarok make sure you do subscribe so you can find your way back here easily I'm going to be covering the game in its entirety I'm very much looking forward to having you here with me a big thanks to the Reloads team specifically Nika and Dennis for helping me source all of this information for you in this video top work team my additional thanks to the Reloaders as well who support the channel with your own hard-earned cash you are absolutely fantastic so thank you very much and hopefully I'll see you in the next video which should be on your screen right now as usual, coffee is on me.